Welcome to Tech Brothers Domino. In this video, we are going to learn for each loop activity in Azure Data Factory. So, uh, what you will be learning here, you will be learning uh, how to create the array and uh, how to loop through those values uh, by using uh, for each uh, loop activity. Then you will be learning uh, uh, how to get the list of the files from blob storage by using get metadata activity and uh, loop through that uh, list of the files uh, by using uh, for each activity. Then you will be also using lookup activity to get the some data from the Azure SQL DB and uh, then we'll use uh, the for each loop activity to loop through that. So there is a uh, multiple things that we are going to learn through this uh, video. Now, what we are going to do here, we are going to take a look on the definition here. So the for each uh, activity defines a repeating control flow in Azure Data Factory or Synapse pipeline. The activity is used to iterate over a collection and execute specific activities in the loop. So that means if there is an array that has a collection of values, we can loop through. If there is a list of the files, we can loop through. If there are uh, some data we have uh, extracted from SQL or some other database, so we can loop through that data by using a for each activity. The loop implementation of this activity is similar to the for each loop in structure in a programming language. So that's great. Let's go ahead and take a look now. First of all, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a, an, uh, create a pipeline. So let's go to the Azure Data Factory here. Click on Azure Data Factory. That's my Azure Data Factory Tech Brothers ADF. Let's open a studio. Click on Author. And here we will be creating a pipeline, a new pipeline. And now what first thing what we are going to do, we are going to create a, a variable. So go to variables here on the pipeline level and then you're going to hit the new. Now we will be providing name. So I'm going to say file name, um, file names. OK, so this is an array. So I'm going to select array and here I'm going to provide some values. So let's do this. I will say customer file dot txt and then my second file is the product file dot uh, txt then the third one could be anything so I, I am separating the values let me take this uh, just copy go to right here so I can show you what I'm typing so right there and then uh, I can have another one say uh, order file dot txt okay so there are three values that we are saving in this uh, array type of variable so let me make a copy. Let's go back to our Azure Data Factory and I'm going to paste uh, right there. Sorry. V. Okay, so this looks good. Now, what we are going to do here, we are going to use the for each loop. So maybe you want to load these files uh, uh, from uh, some table or sorry, from some database and all that, then you can loop through. And uh, inside the for each loop, you can use uh, copy activity, just change the name of these ones uh, in the source and uh, load them. So I have all definitions uh, in the other uh, videos so you can watch them. But here, our main goal is to be using the for each loop and showing you how to iterate through. So search for for each and uh, here under the iteration and condition you're going to see the for each now right there you're going to go to the uh, settings and in the settings uh, what you're going to do you're going to you can do is uh, looping through when you're looping through you can have sequential okay fine because in our case we don't care uh, we don't want to process this one in parallel and all that in the items uh, you're going to click add dynamic content uh, here, what you will do, you will click the file names. So the file names are variable that is added type that has items, right? So that's fine. So hit OK. And now what we are going to do, we are going to go ahead and debug. Now inside that for each loop should have at least one activity. So in my case, I'm not copying anything or all that. I'm going to go ahead and use the wait activity because I'm going to show you output anyways in the output window. So that's going to be fine. So let's debug. So right there, so you see there are three counts. So if you remember that in our variable, so we have three items. In uh, let me take you to variable. So customer file, product file, and order file. So now I click right there on the output. It completed. So for each loop, uh, once we provide that array, it said, "Oh, okay, you have three items right there. Fine. Now go to the wait here. Item one, and uh, then uh, item two." and item three so right there actually there uh, maybe i can do one thing i can as i want to show you the value 
of that uh, variable. So let me do one thing. Let me go to the inside the for each loop and instead of uh, using uh, just uh, let me go back uh, to the pipeline and I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to create a variable called a uh, file name variable. Okay, so this is going to be string. So I'm going to go to the inside the for each loop and inside here I'm going to use a set variable. So then I can at least show you the every time the iteration is happening, the values change. You know? So go to variables here and uh, I select file name variable and how the value is going to come coming from the for each. So add content here and for each dot item, right? So let's click right there. Now we are going to go ahead and debug. So let's see for each loop three items. Yes. And now we, what we are going to do, we are going to go to the set variable. And here we can see that the uh, so first value customer.txt. So from the items, uh, it is looping through and each time it is getting us uh, the new value. So those are the three values was sitting in the array and it looped through. Now I can, uh, if I, as I said that uh, here, I can use a copy activity and uh, I can use all different activities uh, to make use of that uh, values. Uh, that was when uh, you want to loop through the array value in the for each loop uh, that I showed you here. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to do a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new pipeline in this pipeline. Uh, what we will do, uh, let me see, pipeline and uh, add new pipeline. And this pipeline, we are going to get the list of the file uh, from the Azure uh, blob storage. Uh, so here is my blob storage. And in the blob storage, I have uh, uh, containers and uh, in the containers, uh, let me go to the blob storage right here. So in the containers, uh, I have the input container, input container have the list of the file. So maybe I want to just move, get the list of the file, loop through them, load to each table and uh, then uh, get it done. So that's I can do also with the for each. So first of all, I need to get the list of the files. So I'm going, going to use get metadata here. And uh, once I go to the data set here, I have to make a connection to the blob storage. Select a delimited text file there. And now what we are going to do, we are going to select a new link service. So I should create a new link service. I'm going to select subscription and then I'm going to select my storage. Create. All good here. Let's select a container from which we would like to select the files. I'm not selecting files because I know that I just need to provide the container and from there I would like to select all files. So you can uh, first row has header if you need it, fine. You or otherwise just leave that as it is because our goal is to get the list of the files. And here in the get metadata activity, we are going to go to the field items field list in the in the arguments we are selecting a child items so what's happening the get metadata activity is going to get the list of all these files for us as a child items right because they are the child in the input folder so if you guys remember that we have told to go to input folder and get me all child items so those are the files sitting there now how i loop through those the list of the files and load them so i will use for each loop right here I'm going to get uh, connect, uh, get metadata activity to the for each, uh, and then uh, I'm going to click on settings. Uh, it's still, uh, you can do sequential. If uh, you do parallel, then multiple counts, uh, you know, you will get the list and then uh, it will run kind of parallel. But in my case, I'm going to go with sequential. And here in the items, uh, we are going to go to the dynamic items and uh, I'm going to go to the get metadata activity. So in the output, uh, what contain the list of the items? That's our child items. So that we have to tr 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 tell uh, this output, right? So in the child items, that's what we have to explain. Now, our for each loop will get the list of the file. Now, if I can go ahead and say, oh, I wanna um, execute the whole thing, uh, what's gonna happen? So let me create a variable here so I can show you that value as well. I'm going to say file name. Okay, and that's my variable. I'm going to go to inside the for each loop. Inside the for each loop, I'm going to say set variable. Okay, so I, I on each of the iteration, uh, the value of this variable will be set. Uh, and a good variable, file name, and here is the value, add dynamic contents. And the values will be coming from the for each loop because we have provided all the values to the for each loop and it's going to loop through one by one, right? So for each loop, 
and uh, that's the uh, uh, dot name okay so in the child items uh, there are two things it's going to return you it's going to return you the name and it's going to return you the type in my case i'm interested to get the name so that's good hit okay now let's execute the pipeline so you can see right there get metadata activity it got us the name of the file and type of it right child items inside the child items so we pass this whole array to the our for each loop and then inside the for each loop we have right there total seven items and then we have set activity variable so right there so the first c file name value dot customer so that's uh, has a the file name variable and this is the value for it okay so then keep going to the next one and keep going to the next one so it got all those files one after one so in a real world what you will be doing and you will be using a copy activity here maybe using this that value for the file name as an input and read that file and load to some table maybe create a destination table with the same name and all that i have those examples in my other videos now let's go to another scenario where uh, we have Azure uh, uh, SQL DB and we have a table. Now think about that if I want to loop through some of the values. So in this case, uh, maybe I have country and region and I would like to uh, do, let's do region comma country. Okay, so there are two values and I'm going to go actually and say distinct. So there could be many scenarios where I'm, you might be getting the values from your uh, some table or uh, maybe there you have saved in some file and you read through read the values and you want to look through. So that's what I'm going to show you. So we have right here and uh, let me go back to your uh, Azure Data Factory here and uh, create a new pipeline and this pipeline. First of all, we need to get the data, right? So we need to use a lookup activity. Lookup activity can be used to connect to different sources and get the data for us. So here we have to tell which data source. And in my case, it's going to be Azure SQL DB, okay? So click next and create a new linked service. Select your subscription, server name, database name, and username, IT. And I have to provide the password. Now let's say hit create and uh, our link service will be created. Uh, now here we don't have to provide a table name and uh, I can uh, just ignore that for now. And uh, just uh, what we will do, we'll use the query. Hit uh, uh, query and then select distinct region and country code from table. And one more thing, uh, see right there, first row only. You can select only first row, or if you want to select all rows, then uncheck this box. In my case, there are multiple values and I will get all of them. Now, after the lookup, as I said that, you might want to loop through those values and do something about them. So right there, now you have a for each, and in the for each, uh, you're gonna click right there and go to settings, and here, let's do sequential as well. Go to items and uh, items will be coming from the lookup.output. Now there are multiple things. So you have uh, uh, what we have there, we can say that output.value and uh, then uh, that should do it. And in this case, uh, what we are gonna do, I'm gonna go to the activities here and let's put the weight here for now and let's execute. Then we will talk about that, uh, creating maybe more variables and all that. So in the lookup, uh, Let's let it execute. And the lookup failed. That's weird because, uh, okay, TBIT user have the permission, but uh, there is something we have to do. We have to go back to our Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, what we have to do, we have to go to our uh, uh, SQL and then go to the firewall and tell like uh, some permissions. So go to our SQL here we will be going to the firewall settings and virtual networks and allow azure services and resources so because the adf we are not using private endpoints so that's why i have to give permission for the azure data factory to access this server okay so that's fine let's come back and now we execute our pipeline this time we should be fine so see right there 
the output of our lookup is the total five count. Okay. Now value contain region and country. So country and region, right? So you see right there. So we have that. Now inside the for each loop, if you see, I have used a bit, so I'm not really using the country and region. But here, you know, know that uh, total item count is uh, we have uh, five. Now let me create two variables. Variable one. Now I'm going to call it a country, and second variable I'm going to call it region. Okay. Now go to the uh, activities here in the for each, and here we will be using a set variable. So I will be bringing two set variable because in one I will be setting uh, the value for my country and uh, then uh, in the other one for the region set country value and then here I will say set region value okay you can connect them if you want uh, I don't know if uh, we don't connect them I think it will be still okay but Anyways, so go to set countries here, go to variable, select the country variable, go to the value, add dynamic contents. So here you're going to go to the for each items. And if you remember that, then we have two columns, right? So country that uh, in the items, and then there would be other one that is a region. So go to a region variable here, select the region variable and in the value, add dynamic contents for each loop items. And what do you want to do? Region, right? So we are all good here. Now we are going to go ahead and execute the pipeline. Okay, so you see that uh, we have a for each loop here, total five items. And then we have a set country. So it country is India. Then the next time, uh, and the region is Asia. And then we have a set country is equal to Pakistan. And then uh, we have a set region is equal to Asia. So see inside that uh, our for each loop, uh, it uh, is setting the value for our both variables. So uh, there are uh, five settings for the country, five settings for the uh, region. That's why it is showing us multiple values. Okay, so this is how once you have uh, the value then you can loop through so we have seen three scenarios here first uh, where we created an array of values and we use uh, for each loop to loop through those uh, array values or items then we use the get metadata to get the list of the files from a folder and then we use the for each loop to loop through that uh, list of the files in the third example uh, we got the values from our uh, sql table and then uh, we loop through by using the for each loop so I hope these different scenarios will help you to implement them in a real time, uh, real time um, uh, scenarios, or uh, at your job, and uh, uh, you know, uh, create a, a pipeline. So, so thank you very much for watching, and please go ahead and subscribe my channel if you guys like my effort. And I will see you guys in next video.